what is going on guys welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to learn how to download and show an image in a swift ui app so the importance behind this topic is right now in swift ui we have an image ui component but what if we want to pass in a url and just get the image from somewhere on the server um, you know which is oftentimes the case when you're working with like an api or you want to build your own app with remote images so We'll take a look at a really, really simple way where you can do this. Not only will it download it, but it also is caching support. So you don't need to worry about, you know, bad performance or anything in your app. Uh, and yeah, we'll take a look at that a whole nine yards. So that said, make sure you destroy the like button first and foremost of the YouTube algorithm helps out quite a bit. Hit subscribe if you're new to the channel and have not done so already. Get excited, get Xcode ready. Let's talk about downloading some images in your Swift UI app. Quick pause before the video. This video is brought to you by iosacademy.io. If you're interested in building some of the top apps from around the world, like YouTube, Instagram, Uber, and Facebook, head on over to iosacademy.io and toss in your email in the waitlist form here to be notified as content becomes available. Content includes interview prep, free courses, premium content, how to build TikTok, Messenger, Instagram, and anything else you could think of in between. That said, let's get into the video. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project here. I'm gonna stick with the app template under the iOS tab, and let's go ahead and call this SwiftUI download images, just like that. Make sure your interface and lifecycle are both SwiftUI. Make sure the language is Swift. Go ahead and continue, and we'll save this guy to our desktop. And like so, let me expand our Xcode window here to give ourselves a little more room to work. And I'm also gonna hit that button right there to get our canvas uh, loading up our preview. So, so cool. So first things first, we wanna bring in the framework that's gonna allow us to really easily you know, use a URL to load in an image. And it's this framework right here called SWURL. I'm gonna link it down below uh, in the description. But basically, in a nutshell, what you can do is you can use this really cool remote image view, uh, view right in your uh, content view and just provide the URL to the image. So uh, I'll link it down below, but we need to bring it into our project. So we're gonna start by copying the URL here. It looks like our preview is deciding to be super slow. So while that loads in Xcode, we're gonna go to File, uh, Swift packages, and we're going to add a package dependency. Go ahead and paste that uh, URL in. It'll go and grab the latest version. We can keep all this stuff as is. Hit continue and let it do its thing. It shouldn't take too long. And just like that, once uh, it has uh, brought in a dependency, go ahead and hit command B just to compile, make sure everything is still uh, building and you know, nothing has broken. And uh, right after that, we can start using this. So the first thing we would probably wanna do uh, is import what we brought in. And it looks like this is called SWURL. So we are going to import respectively that module. And uh, let's go ahead and make this a little nicer. So I'm gonna create a navigation view. We're gonna pop in a V stack. We're gonna have a text in here. Uh, let's say loading images. Let me give this a navigation title of uh, welcome, just like that. And the next thing we wanna basically do is grab a URL to an image. So I've grabbed the URL for the iOS Academy uh, logo here. And uh, we wanna bring in that remote image uh, view, which is included in SWURL. So we're just gonna start adding it here. So it's a remote image view. We'll open up the constructor and let's see what we've got. So the simplest version of this uh, basically uh, just takes a URL. So let's go ahead and create a URL. We're gonna have to put an exclamation mark here to force unwrap it um, since that's how the URL constructor is. And uh, let's see if we can get away with loading uh, this, you know, downloading the image uh, in the preview here. So I'm gonna hit resume. And we definitely have not seen an update because it's still showing hello world. All right, there's our update. Um, and what we probably have to do is hit this little play icon and we should see our image loads in just like that. So what's really nifty about this framework is, um, you know, you can play with it right in the preview. You don't have to uh, build and run to a simulator every time. 
So the first thing we'll notice is there's an issue here. And that issue is uh, we haven't uh, set the aspect ratio. So I'm gonna take aspect ratio here and we need to set it to fit just like that. And you'll see this fits in nicely. I'm also gonna go ahead and apply the modifier for uh, resizable. Let's see if we spell that correctly, slightly important. Uh, resizable, I definitely didn't spell that right. Let me just get rid of it. But, but taking a step back for a moment, uh, let me copy this URL and let's uh, get rid of this again. Let's take a look at the other uh, initializer here. So the other, the other initializer allows you to pass in a URL. So to do that, same as before, it'll be a URL with a string and we'll just paste uh, this guy in here like that and force unwrap it just like that. The next parameter is a placeholder image. Uh, this is optional, as you can see. So if you want to show something while it's loading, I'm going to use a SF symbol. We're going to use a system name here, and we're going to use the photo symbol. And here you can actually even uh, specify an animation, which they've called uh, transition. And uh, there's a custom or none. So we're going to actually toss in an animation here. So uh, the first thing that we want to do in here is uh, specify what do we want to animate. We're going to say opacity. And then here we want to specify, we're going to do, uh, let's say, we're going to say ease in. And we're going to specify duration. We're going to say 0 0.25 seconds, just like that. And uh, let's go ahead and pause this preview. And let me put this in dark mode so we can make sure it looks cool in dark mode as well. So we're going to hit that change this to dark. And just like that, let's go ahead and hit this one more time. And uh, what you'll notice is, well, right off the bat, we have an issue with uh, the aspect ratio again. And it's actually loading in so quickly that we can't even see our uh, placeholder image. Um, we could hypothetically uh, make up something random here that doesn't exist. Let's see what happens. So we're gonna pause this. And we're going to hit resume and we should start seeing uh, our uh, image here. So we passed in photo here. I'm not sure if that's an actual uh, symbol, but uh, I wonder if the framework has given us issues because random doesn't actually exist. But I digress. Uh, if your photo is taking a long time to load, you will see uh, the placeholder here. And let me just do command Z to get that back. But uh, let's take a look at some other interesting things we can do. So one other thing you can do is, let's specify the uh, initializer here. You can actually set on the framework, so SWURL, the caching type. So this, uh, this library actually caches images for you as they download, which is extremely important. Um, you can imagine if you put a bunch of images in, uh, let's say like a list or a grid where the user can scroll, you don't want to download them over and over. You want to download them and then cache them. So there are uh, three different options here. So there's in memory uh, and persistent as well as custom. So generally uh, persistent will do the job for uh, you know most use cases. Persistent specifies that even between app launches, the image will be cached. Uh, in memory is it'll be cached for the duration of the app that you're running. So if the user fully closes it, you know, the next time it opens, it'll download it. And custom, you can actually specify, which is even cooler, if you have any other, uh, you know, if you implement a custom way to cache the images, you can actually specify it here. 99.999% uh, of people will never use this. Um, and persistent or in memory is sufficient, but I uh, figured I'd call that out there. So cool, what else can you do with this? So I'm gonna come back here, let's go to the docs. So. The first thing you'll notice is there's a modifier for uh, image processing where you can actually process the image uh, after it's downloaded uh, before it's actually assigned into the view. So in this example here, what it's doing is it's saying it's resizable. It's uh, saying the rendering mode is template. So you can basically use, uh, you know, like monochrome tints to make it a different color. And then it's also specifying a fit aspect ratio like we did before. The difference of using this modifier is that this will all be applied to this inbound image that's downloaded versus if we applied all these modifiers directly onto this remote image view, they're actually being applied to the placeholder image. So this is pretty important. 
So cool, the next one here is progress. So personally, I think this one's really cool because you know this modifier just makes your life so much easier. If you can show a loading indicator right on top of your image view uh, with literally two lines of code. So I'm gonna actually copy that. And if we come back here and we paste it, uh, let me go ahead and uh, paste it right down on here. Now it's a modifier, so I should be able to get away with uh, pasting it right there. Let me make this a little smaller so the line breaks get a little cleaner. But so we're gonna paste that right there. And basically, let me hit Control I to align it. Uh, a progress view is gonna show up on top of our uh, actual, uh, you know, on top, whatever view we specify here will show up on top of the image. So this my progress bar view is a custom implementation. So you could, uh, you know, you could show like your own custom view or you could show in our case, we're gonna say uh, loading and the progress, which is the inbound uh, parameter of this view builder is the actual amount that the image has loaded zero to 100%. So the cool thing with this modifier is you can let the user know, you know, the download state for, you know, users with slower internet, how much of their thing has downloaded. Personally, I would use like a view, which is like a circle that fills in just like how Apple's uh, app update UI looks like on your home screen. It's a really nice slick looking UI, but I digress once more, you have the option with this modifier. Um, and that's really it. So I'm gonna link this down below. It actually shows you here and it goes into detail of basically what we just went into about you know, like the progress, and you can also get uh, the image processing closure here from this modifier. But this is a, almost a staple to any SwiftUI app uh, that you're building right now because you know downloading is fairly trivial of an image. However, uh, this gives you the caching ability that almost every single app is going to need. Um, and for those of you that are familiar with UI kits, uh, you can think of this library as a, you know, kind of a sibling to SD web image, which is very, very popular in UI kit apps, um, which is heavily used for caching images once they're downloaded. So uh, that's really it. You can uh, preview all the stuff in the preview, um, no pun intended. But uh, yeah, that's all I've got. So if you haven't done so already, make sure you destroy the like button. Comment down below. Do you guys download your own images? Do you have your own observable objects you use? What do you think of this framework? I think it's pretty slick and easy to use. And uh, hit subscribe if you're new to the channel. Welcome. We do iOS, Swift, and other Apple-related videos. So uh, hit that bell icon to stay up to date, and I'll catch you all in the next video.